previously on board. Sarah, Craig. Hello, Craig. John. Yeah, yes. how's it? Craig. Hello, how are you? All right, new man. Yes, you hear me there. Yeah, loud and clear, man. How's it yeah, going there? Yeah, I like it. It's just cold and wet, but uh, that's what you expect, huh? That's Edinburgh for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, th- thanks for. Uh, we just. I'm t- telling you. I read your article over the weekend. I had a complete blank. It was. I thoroughly enjoyed it. What? Uh, wh- what did you write about in the Times again this weekend? I, I did a couple. Uh, one on Raymond Rule and one on Ibn Hesbe. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then obviously the match stuff. Yeah, yeah. Read, read, read both of them. Awesome stuff. Very, very nice read this weekend. Now, thanks a lot for joining us this afternoon. And um, yeah, what, what's the mood over there after the test against Ireland? Yeah, the guys have got a spring in their step, obviously. I mean, it's always good to have a win under the belt. And, uh, you know, it can become a long tour when you when you lose in the first game. And, uh, you know, then you hit to Scotland, as we know, 2002 and 2010. They lost to Scotland. Yeah. So, you know, it's always a bit of a banana peel, yeah. Um, so the boys are in good good shape. I mean, obviously the Beast is leaving today or, or tomorrow. And that's, you know, got the squad a little bit worried uh, over his heart condition. But... Uh, you know, France will have us coming over, and generally, the you know, I've I've seldom seen the Springboks train with such zip. And you know, last week they were also very good in training, and uh, you know, it doesn't always translate onto the field, but they really do look like a happy group. And uh, as as we speaking now, I'm watching them train at uh, Peffermore Rugby Ground, and uh, there's a lot of energy out there. Yeah, that, that's good. And I think those banana peels that they've experienced before uh, will probably make them uh, realise that Scotland aren't ever a walkover. If you just give them a little bit of a gap, they can actually surprise you. So um, yeah. No, no point in just going there expert, just thinking you're going to win the game. No, exactly. And I mean, you know, everyone, you know, the All Blacks stumped Scotland yesterday and everyone's going, well, you know, the Springboks should also put 50 points on the All Blacks, but, I mean, on, on Scotland, but, you know, that's not the case. So the Springboks never really put 50 points on Scotland in November in, in Edinburgh. And also, you know, the All Blacks side is a very vastly different machine. And secondly, Scotland, they've got some good attacking players. They scored three tries against the All Blacks. That's the first time the All Blacks have conceded three tries the entire year. And if it wasn't for sort of a 10-minute spell in that game where the All Blacks scored three tries and sort of ripped it away, which is, you know, what the All Blacks do, Scotland were actually in that game for long periods. So I don't think we must read too much into that result that Scotland are just going to be a walkover because, uh, you know, they've got a good coach in Andy Robinson and they've got a bit of uh, momentum. You know, they beat, they beat Australia away this year. They're, they're a decent side. Look, every day of the week, the Springboks should beat Scotland, but it's not going to be an easy game. It's going to be a real arm wrestle out there. Now, look, beating Australia is not saying much these days, eh, Craig? <laughs> yeah, not what I'm thinking. <laughs> uh, let's just quickly uh, get it. I know you said it's raining and cold there at the moment. Is that the weather that we can expect all the way through the week, including the weekend? Well, look, the, the, the sort of medium-term weather forecast was sort of to clear up a bit later in the week. Mm. So hopefully it will be a dry, it will really obviously be a cold day, but hopefully it will be dry. But, you know, everything is damp underfoot. Nothing really dries properly. So even if it's not raining, it will still be sort of tricky, slippery underfoot conditions. So, uh, you know, I don't expect uh, the Springboks to suddenly turn into the GM7 team. Uh, <laughs> time to see they're going to be, you know, sticking. You know, I think we're going to see, uh, you know, Sean de Jong's going to get a start. So I okay. can tell you that cool. uh, if, if they're training. Uh, so that will be interesting because, uh, you know, he's a bit of a hot stepper and they're bringing him in in these conditions. And I think we might see uh, Gaffo get a start if he uh, comes through training properly uh, at Lucid. Uh, and the only other issue is over tight head. Yanni Duke is on the side of the field as we speak with an ankle injury. Um, and he's sort of touch and go for the weekend. So France, you know, France will have a flying over, you'd expect. Probably Pat Salio and CJ Hunderland to start if Yanni is ruled out. So, mm. um, yeah, it's a, two changes maximum. Yeah, Annika threw out a bit of a red herring that got everyone flapping today. He said he might rest Jean de Villiers and, you know, I can't see that happening. Uh, honestly, I don't think Jean de Villiers will be rested at this stage. I mean, uh, two games to go. As much and as the captain, so, uh, you know, as much as Jean's probably begging to just have one week off somewhere. I mean, he was planning on having it before the semi final. I didn't get it. Still hasn't come. Well, well, he, he conveniently pulled his hamstring in that one game for Western Province just in time to have a rest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, um, I just say, so Jean de Jong uh, looks like he's going to get a bit of a start. Um, I do, what is the general thought just on, um, on that, on that first, sort of first half in particular? Um, have you had any feedback on. How oh, they saw that because there were a couple of stunned people that suddenly found us uh, 12-3 down in that game. Uh, many people were thinking the box were going to yeah. win quite comfortably against that island side, uh, which was obviously mistaken thinking from the beginning, but still, there were a few people very surprised. What's the general feeling about that first half? 
Yeah, I think technically they got it a bit wrong. They tried to play a bit too much rugby with the with the little position they had. I mean, you'll I mean you'll notice most fans would have noticed that once they got the rolling mall going in the second half, the whole game changed completely on the back of the rolling mall. Which they didn't try in the first half. If you remember, they took a few lineouts and, and and they were quick off the top lineouts and they tried to get the ball moving and it was just the wrong time to to do that. And then and, and they got themselves into a little bit of trouble, you know, isolated at the breakdown. Of, and Ireland was very really niggly, very, very niggly. I mean, they were holding players back at the, at the rucks, and it was just an ugly, niggly game, and I think the box just, uh, you know, didn't settle into a rhythm properly. And they, the tactically, they were probably a bit off yeah. in their game. So, um, you know, in the second half, when they got the tactics right, they just kept it tight, kept some position, you know, got the running walls going, and, you know, they got the rewards for it. So, and they also physically fronted up in the second half. I thought in the second half, they just sort of up the up the physicality stakes, and Ireland couldn't live with it really. Uh, and you know, I think they were a little bit flat in that first half, in the in that test. And you know, the beast had been rushed to hospital the night before. It was like you know a bit of disruption in the morning. Hanker van der Mavre came in. He's never, he never, he hasn't played for five years. He hasn't you know, been, been near a Springbok squad for five years. He's he had joined them on the Wednesday. Suddenly, he's going to go through a whole bunch of calls and routines and try and cram everything in. And there was all this sort of disruption on the day of the match which isn't ideal so I think mentally they were a little bit off their game in the first 40 minutes but uh, I think Heineken used a few expletives at half time and, uh, and uh, yeah, they, they got the message loud and clear in the second half so um, yeah, I think they'll, they'll start a bit better this week and I enjoyed watching Heineken van der Mava back in that fold I must admit particularly in that, that, in that second half where he was very effective in the scrums he was. He was absolutely outstanding. He won two penalties, one deep in our half when they were on attack, which you know gave us a turnover, a chance to escape. And the other one, of course, led to Patrick Lambie's penalty that ultimately made it a four-point difference, and that was you know, enough to make Ireland have to chase, chase the game in the last 10 minutes. So I think it did really well. I just had to get in the blazer because I think it was really big to make fields blazer. <laughs> 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 That's what happens when you have his last minute decision. All right, and um, just the thoughts on Pat Lambie. He will, uh, he will start this weekend again at 10? Yeah, uh, Heineken sort of entered at that, and as I'm looking at the sort of 18 back line training pants that fly off. Yeah, he was good. Uh, he was very good in the second half. Again, he, he was sort of a victim of, of the Ford getting smashed up a little bit in that first half, and then. You know, he, he didn't get too much front football to work with and, and also maybe made a few technical mistakes himself in terms of, you know, he, he went to kick and went to run in that first half and he settled down nicely in the second half on the platform that was there from the forward. And I thought he really dominated the game in the second half. I was, I was actually quite impressed with his performance in the second half. You know, he varies his depth. He runs from deep and then he lies flat and then he runs at an angle and he throws a, you know, an inside pass. He's, he mixes it up nicely and, uh, you know, I think he needs to grow into the role at test level and that's why I'm glad Hedick is giving him another go because uh, I think you know, the coach also realised that you know, first half was difficult for everyone so let's give him at least another 60 or 70 minutes and see how he goes you know, in the number 10 jersey so yeah, from that point of view good continuity I think all right. I know that uh, Steve Hansen's talking, saying that he wants to give all his squad uh, a run in the first couple of uh, autumn internationals up there. Maybe he uh, he has the luxury of being able to do that, uh, looking at their schedule versus ours. I don't I don't think Hanek is in a position where he's just going to do that. I mean, obviously we're looking at a couple of plays we'd like to see, but he's pretty much going to stick to the core of what uh, what won against Ireland, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, Steve Hansen's in a luxurious position where you know he's got a World Cup winning core squad you know 23 odd players from their World Cup winning side and a lot of good young players coming through and it's really different uh, place where the All Blacks are to where the Springboks are if you yeah. think about it and uh, so yeah Hanson you know, he's also playing against Italy and you know, Scotland let's be honest Scotland never troubled the All Blacks like they trouble yeah. us it's just because the way the All Blacks play so so he's got easier sort of games as well to, to mix and match in, in, in some ways but uh, yeah there was a funny uh, thing last night the uh, All Blacks and the Springboks were at the same hotel because <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the, the box arrived in Edinburgh and the All Blacks were still in Edinburgh, obviously, having played against Scotland yesterday. So, you had the uh, situation of uh, uh, Dan Carter and uh, Pat Lambie sharing a lift and trying to ignore each other. <laughs> <laughs> you think they'd they be brethren if it's, uh, against the Northern Hemisphere, but no, eh? still, still, still a little icy no, between the two. Yeah, it was quite good camaraderie, actually. A lot of the box players and the All Blacks get on pretty well, and the yeah. guys all, all mingling and chatting and. And uh, he saw Steve Hansen and, and Annika Mayer, you know, sort of 
having a long chat this morning uh, as well as the All Blacks were clearing out and the box was still waiting for their rooms. So uh, that was great. <laughs> 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 so they had to go to Dan Carter's room after he's done with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Apparently he's got smelly feet, someone told me. I don't know. <laughs> Ah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> this is why we don't send you on those tours, John. Can you imagine Wallen in that hotel seeing both sides, both squads there at the same time? Oh, it would have been absolutely You would have imploded. You would have just gone absolutely mad. Yeah. All right. Well, Craig, we, <laughs> we appreciate your time, bud. Thanks a lot. Enjoy Thanks, uh, enjoy Edinburgh. Uh, to Queen Street tonight, obviously. Some good pubs there still? Yeah, absolutely. Was it Queen or Princess? Uh, funnily enough, I've heard great. It's pretty, well, it's Prince Street, and then, uh, then it's, uh, well, what's it called, uh, the Royal Mile. Yeah, the Royal uh, Mile. Which is very lucky. We had the... We had, a, we had a great traditional Scottish dish last night, a curry. It was outstanding. <laughs> and, uh, tonight I think we're going for deep, we'll be going for deep fried Mars bars tonight with Vegas. <laughs> oh, no. Enjoy. Oh, yeah, good to rather you than me. Thanks a lot, Craig. Enjoy the rest of the week there. Thanks Just for chatting great. to us, bud. Just great. Make, make a guard. Cheers, Cheers, bye-bye. Bye-bye. There we go. Craig Ray joining us from Scotland, Edinburgh. This is... Balls Visual Radio. Darren, Simon, Kate and John. Weekdays from 3pm to 6pm Central African Time. Balls.co.za